Hey, Flow Racing, this is Courtney Enders here with yet another episode of getting to know the drivers of the Pro Superstar Shootout that you can find on Flow Racing. And I have found superstar Austin Proc, driver of the Top Fuel John Force Racing Car. But we're not going to talk about that, Austin. I want to get to know you on a different level. You and I are buddies, and I picked up that you kind of cook a lot. I follow you on Instagram. We do all these things. So uh, are you a good chef? Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the things that I love to do besides race. So really my only hobby. And uh, we're going to eat some delicious food today. Listen, I have a surprise for you. This isn't your camp. This isn't your kitchen. But Chef Cody has made the elite kitchen yours. So let's go make some food. All right. at the postdoc pits, but we've got a pretty decent setup. I am not domesticated. I do not cook. I am an Uber Eats kind of gal. But uh, do you think that this will suffice for a yeah, nice little menu we've made? Absolutely. It's beautifully set up, and uh, it looks like it has everything I could ever need. So uh, let's get to it. All right, first things first. Tell us what we're making today. So we're going to do some uh, Lacken Red Snapper Flatbreads. We're going to make a nice chimichurri sauce and then a yogurt sauce to go and uh, balance that heat out a little bit. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've made these once before, and uh, they were a huge hit. So. Uh, Let's give it a go. I skipped lunch and I'm hungry. All right, perfect. So We're let's gonna dive eat. into it. I want you to kind of explain as you're getting started. I'm gonna get out of your hair, let you do your thing as you need to, but give us just a little history of why cooking, why culinary school, and that background of your life. It all started really with my mother to begin with, and then as a kid when I would come to the races, we had a chef at John Force Racing, Johnny Rosher. He actually has a couple restaurants up in Lake Tahoe. If I wasn't working on the car as a kid, I was in the kitchen helping him, so he really uh, boosted the love for me, and uh, my first job at 13 was in the kitchen at a Greek restaurant, so I've been doing it quite a while now. Well, perfect. Let's show us what you got and kind of give us a little, a little taste so I can maybe go back home and do this for myself. Yeah, all right. right. What kind of fish did we get today? We got some red snapper in here. Um, I'm just gonna get it going uh, so I can get it up to room temp before I grill it. Uh, get the seasoning on it, let it mingle a little bit, maybe put a little lime juice on it. So tell us about culinary school. Where did you go to? What was that like? And, and kind of give me a little insight of that. Um, I actually went to a place called uh, the Art Institute of Indianapolis. Uh, it was downtown Indianapolis. and. To be honest, uh, I wanted to go to business school, but through high school, I didn't really try all that hard and uh, got bounced out of everywhere I applied for. So cooking was where I landed. And uh, honestly, it was the best uh, best thing that's ever happened to me, really, other than racing professionally. Uh, I found a love for something, and it's something I can entertain everyone with. I can have people over to my house. Uh, I'll, I'll cook for 30 or 40 people at a time, and uh, going to that schooling just made that so much easier. Do you cook for your team? Do you have parties at your house and Absolutely, all that? Absolutely, yes. Lots of team parties, uh, especially after wins. Listen, I'm telling you, I see it on your Instagram. That's kind of how this this started, and I got to know about your passion. You do, and it's not just the cooking. You have a whole spread. Your love for hosting, is that another part of it? Yeah, absolutely. I love to entertain. Um, you know, there's nothing better than, for me, is uh, being around people and making people smile. So uh, it's an easy way for me to do it. Talk to me a little bit about your history in this sport. A lot of people may not know your name, where you race. They kind of intertwine in a weird way. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually a fourth generation racer. Um, my great grandfather raced back in the 30s and 40s racing uh, midgets and Indy cars. Actually finished 10th in the Indianapolis 500 as a ride on mechanic. My grandfather, he was a pioneer of the sport and drag racing. Uh, Tom Brock racing nitro bunny cars. My dad was full time on the race car at I think 13 and has been doing it ever since. Uh, me and my brother, all three of us, um, we just fell in love with it the same way. It's all we know. I don't know what I would do without it. Uh, when COVID hit and I lost my ride, I, I didn't know what to do with my life. I ended up working construction, and that is definitely not for me. Would you ever go work in a kitchen? Would you ever try, and if this disappears? I think that I would like to open a restaurant one day. Um, Johnny, he tells me, don't get into it. It's way too much work, way too stressful. Um, but it, it has been a dream of mine, a goal of mine, uh, to eventually do that one day. It wouldn't be much of a retirement, but that's my retirement plan. Besides drag racing, anything you and your family have been into on another brand uh, of motorsport? I actually grew up circle track racing, so uh, I raced for Tony Stewart for five years, nice and open wheel cars, midgets and sprint cars. Um, and I have a huge passion for that. Back in 2021, I ran the Chili Bowl for the third time. When some of the fans come to the racetrack and they'll have one of my circle track shirts on, they'll be like, we've been following you since you were doing this. So uh, that means a lot to me. 
Yeah, so with this sense, flow racing is really, really big in the circle track scene very new with drag racing. And so we're trying to integrate these audiences and, and share the love for motorsports. So talk to your circle track friends here about some cool things about drag racing and why they need to switch over. Yeah, um, I mean, one of the main big, biggest reasons right now is uh, a legendary circle track racer is out here owning teams and uh, dabbling it himself, you know? So uh, obviously all motorsports kind of cross paths. Uh, but you definitely need to watch it on flow first and uh, if you're if you're interested in it You've got to come to the racetrack because uh, TV does nothing for this sport You've got to be out here feel it the top fuel dragster I'm driving nowadays is make close to 12,000 horsepower out of an eight. I can't even like wrap my so head around that. It's just uh, it's something that everybody should experience but only you get to driving it sensory wise kind of kind of explain what you go through in that cockpit. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost sensory overload, you know that everything's happening so fast you're really just driving off instinct uh, for the most time um, but when the car doesn't make it down the racetrack and it smokes the tires or shakes that's really when all my circle track background comes into play being able to feather the throttle feel that tire in your ass and getting the thing to recover and uh, i've won a handful of rounds doing that this year and that's all paid off from uh, that circle track racing I love it. And then you come here and slice up jalapenos. That's right. A man of many, many talents. Yeah. I'm going to switch gears to cooking for a little bit. Okay. I cook the most basic of meals. And when you guys brag on our group text, I send like, you know, a preheated roasted chicken or something. Yeah. So uh, what are some of your favorite tools to work with in the kitchen? Um, really, I can use just about everything. Uh, Obviously, it, we've set you up. Yeah. It, uh, it, it just depends on what I'm cooking. Um, I try and cook a little bit of everything. I can make Italian food, I can roll sushi, I can uh, do a little bit of it all. So I have uh, just about every gadget you can think of at my house. I probably have 40 cabinets just full of culinary shit. And if you came to my house, Austin, and saw my cabinets, you would shun me. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> so where do you get your recipe inspiration from? Do you think them up in your head or do you follow some things on the online? Yeah, I actually do my uh, best recipe making sleeping. I'll, I'll dream something up and I'll wake up and I go to the store that morning, get everything that I think I need and go to town when and I And you just know up. what these taste like to know how to make it. Yeah, good. so when I went to culinary school, one of the cool tests that we used to have to do was we would get blindfolded and they would give us a piece of vegetable, meat, seasoning, spice, you name it, and we would have to eat it and tell them exactly what it was. So you kind of learn what everything tastes like and what blends well together. So everybody cuts a little bit different. Is this these methods, things you were taught, or do you cut off your finger and, and learn? Um, I have <laughs> cut off my finger once, uh, but uh, yeah, with one of the first classes you do at culinary school, they teach you how to handle a knife, the knife skills. Uh, so pretty Probably much, a good place to start. yeah, all you do for like uh, six weeks is literally just chop stuff up and throw it out. Um, and I think that's why that schooling is so expensive because you waste a lot. But really just being in the kitchen, working in the restaurant, it's very fast paced. It's actually a lot similar to working on one of these race cars. Um, it's kind of like organized chaos, I call it. Everybody knows exactly where they need to be at the right time. I think that was one of the reasons I liked working in the restaurant so much. Switch modes to back to the race car here. Everybody knows John Porsche the same. Like, it doesn't matter if we're at a baseball game. You mentioned drag racing. Yeah. Oh, they John say Force. John Porsche. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about what it's like being on the inside of that dynasty, because that's what it is. It's really cool, to be honest. You know, as a young kid growing up, I started racing when I was, when I was 10, and all I wanted to do was be a professional race car driver. To get a call from John Ford saying, hey, I want you to come over and be a part of my team, that was unbelievable. And then to start my career, Don Perdome went out there and find, found me the funding to go race in. I've raced under Tony Stewart. It's all these legends that I've been able to be a part of. It's, it's really special and uh, something to be grateful for. for it is, sure. and the longevity of what you guys have been able to do over at John Force Racing is just unheard of, and, and the rest of us just strive for it. But Pro Superstar Shootout, it's kind of this dream that the pro organization had. We weren't really sure how the teams were going to respond to it, but I think the main purpose of this race is all of us coming together as a sport with one goal to make a difference for the drivers, the teams, the sponsors, and the fans. So when you first heard about this race and you knew that you guys were going to be a part of this, what were your first initial thoughts? I was excited. I love NHRA drag racing and, uh, and drag racing in general and any way we can spread the word, gain more viewership, 
I think that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great avenue to look at. I believe being on Flow Racing is going to bring a ton of new um, viewership to this sport. For me, it's like the Formula One deal, that Drive to Survive series on yep. Netflix. I never had any interest in Formula One, but uh, you know they went down a different avenue and advertised to a different crowd. And I'm a huge F1 fan now. But yeah, I think uh, the avenue we're going down with Flow in this uh, Pro Shootout is uh, going to be great. Something that we're going to be able to do at this Superstar Shootout is, like we're doing right now, getting to know a different side. Nowadays, we've got so many cool personalities with different passions, different talents and stuff. Are you excited or nervous to let fans in on this side of you or having that um, live streaming from the pits that we're going to have? You're going to be able to choose which screen you want to watch and come right live to watch Austin Brock Steel. Are you excited to let everybody in? Absolutely. You know, I think... Um getting to know you know the background of a driver and the personality of a driver um, brings in a lot more fans like uh, my neighbor for instance he was never a motorsports fan but he got to know me and now he's a huge drag racing fan but he only watches it because he knows me and he has a personal connection with me and that gets him interested in it so uh, yeah I think the behind the scenes getting to know people is going to be huge and it's big like in NASCAR you know people People follow motorsports because they like cars. You got Chevy guys, you got Mopar guys, all the things, or gals. I feel like if we could get this on the cooking network or something, we could have a whole reach of, of chefs yes. or people who like this that say, oh, I didn't know anything about drag racing, but that guy cooks right there. You know, you see some of these kids on social media nowadays, and they'll have a couple million followers, and all they're doing is the same yep. thing I'm doing here, and people just eat it up because it's relatable to them. They love to cook at home. They literally eat it up? Yes, exactly. I think if we could do some sort of crossover like that, it would definitely bring in a whole bunch of new sets of eyes. Uh, we're gonna turn this on, and then you're gonna slowly drizzle olive oil in here until I tell you to stop. Nervous. Yeah, keep pulsing it like that. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah. It's like an old John Force burnout. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> now I'm into it. Okay, so now you can add add a little bit of olive oil while it's running. While it's running. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, all right. I follow directions well. Yeah, you did great. I'm a good listener. My dad trained me well. Okay. Yeah, just dump it in there. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good so far. Then you got to walk. Oh, okay. It's kind of hard with the breeze here. No, it smells good. It actually does smell pretty it good. It smells really it might good. Be pretty close. Yeah, kind of mix that up, and then we might need to season it a little bit. I don't think it needs any of that. It's actually pretty damn good how it is. That is phenomenal. Yeah, that is good. And it was pretty easy. I may be able to do something like that. I may be texting you for that uh, recipe. Okay, now I'm gonna make like a kind of like a yogurt sauce or tzatziki sauce. I'm just gonna mix some of this in with this. Okay. What are you thinking? More salt? A little salt, yeah. Are you one of those chefs that when you go to a restaurant you like get weird and you get really judgmental? So judgmental, <laughs> yeah. It's really hard for me to go. That's why I cook at home all the time because I can go out and eat and spend all this money, which I like to do. Like if I go out, out and eat, I eat like at a nice steak. You're like a king. Like, I do not mind like, dropping yeah. coin on. It's samba sushi in like, Vegas. Yeah. Yes. yes. Amazing. Uh, what do you got there? Some garlic, something garlic. Yeah, uh, granulated. See, look, garlic. I knew what it looked like. What I've learned about anytime I try and cook is like, it seems overwhelming and complicated, and it is. It's talent for sure, but like. This isn't rocket science. Ah, no. rocket. <laughs> My first there, rocket pun. There you go. Uh, yeah, very simple. I learned this from you. There you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's gonna be good on Oh my thing. gosh. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, bro. Oh my lord. That's some tender stuff right there. Try that. See how thick the skin's all right. You guys know what that means. Even the pita smells good. Oh yeah, bro. All right. So here's uh, can you plate? those plates, please? Oh, 
All our guides are going to be jealous. They said, is Austin cooking for all of us? I said, nope. I should have. You don't want to cook for 60 of us. And we're going to go a little bit of this. Mm. So colorful. Okay. Now I get why they say on the shows when they say, oh, my mouth's watering. I'm literally salivating. So how important is the display of what you do at a meal? Um, I think it's very important because a lot of people will look at something and think it looks gross, and then they don't want to eat it. And so I think making it look appetizing and kind of pretty goes a long way. Like you're doing a lot more than the girl at the Subway sandwich yeah. by my house. Cheers. Cheers. One bite, everybody knows who is. Oh my god. Dude. That's really good. That is phenomenal. They're fucking good. Holy shit. And it only took us 10 minutes. Kids, if you want to get the girls, go to culinary school. Funny gets the honey and soda's cooking. I got both. You do. <laughs>